Ah, uh, perfect. There we go. Brilliant. So yeah, welcome. And um, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for um, having this interview with us today. And also, if you would like to introduce yourself to the community, please. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for having me, Claude. Um, I know it's uh, was it what time is it out there? It's about five o'clock. Five, I okay. think five oh eight. Last time I checked. Awesome. So perfect. Well, thanks for this evening's morning here uh, for having me on your show. So yeah, my name is Mike Del Pre, Executive Director of the Arizona Real Estate Investors Association. So um, I personally am a real estate investor. So all I do all types of strategies from wholesaling, fix and flipping, landlording. So uh, short-term rentals, the whole Airbnb world. Um, but here at Ezria, we uh, represent and support real estate investors like myself uh, throughout all throughout the state of Arizona. So um, whether it's education, networking, um, government affairs, market information. So we're just here to support the real estate investors so they can provide safe, clean, affordable housing uh, throughout our state. So uh, and if if you're watching from UK or wherever you're at uh, on this live, uh, if you have if you're looking to invest in Arizona, we're your we're your go to source for that uh, information. Well, thank you for sharing. And what made, what started the project and the uh, inspiration of what you are doing in real estate, if I may ask? Well, it's, it, well, the inspiration, well, because the inspiration came from Ezria has always been around. We've been around for 21 years here in the state. So um, I became a member of the organization 12 years ago. And then I I utilized the services that are provided, right? Everything I said we do, when I, I didn't know how, what, how to invest in real estate, I didn't know how to raise money, I didn't know how to flip a house, but I went to the classes, I went to the networking, I built my uh, relationships and got my resources and I applied it. And uh, once I started gaining traction and, and doing well in the business, um, I became, you know, I quit my job, all that stuff. I, I became a, a true investor. And then what happened is probably about five years ago, uh, I started teaching here. So it was like, this is, I got all the support and resources from the community. So I only wanted to be able to give back to that because I went from working nine to five, right? I had a, I was getting paid for 40 hours a week. I was working 60 and it was just like, I wanted to change in my life and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the support of this organization. So when I had the opportunity to teach and show people there can be another life out there uh, versus what they're, they may not like what they're doing. They can, you know, have a better financial uh, picture in the future if they bought some real estate. So I wanted to show them how to do it just like the, the members when I started showed me. So that was the inspiration. So I started teaching five years ago and then I took over the organization about two and a half years ago. So it's been a pretty, uh, pretty cool ride so far. Sounds like it. Yeah. And in regard to the education element of teaching real estate, what are the kind of things that you would cover? And also, what would be like your tips that you would give to upcoming real estate individuals? Perfect. So education, right? So since we're um, an investing organization, we cover almost everything in regards to real estate investing. So whether it's wholesaling, fix and flipping, landlording, raising money, whatever it is, that, uh, whatever strategies are out there, we have some type of education for you. Uh, but the tip that I would give is before you, uh, there's a lot of tips, but like as a newer person, you got to get it right up here, right? So it's like, you got to, are you willing to change? Are you willing to take on this new project, right? Um, you got to have the right mindset. Like, are you hanging around the right people, right? Or do you have that, that, that support system at, at home that, because like when you, real estate is such a big thing, when you're just, uh, if you're not born into being successful and money and everything, that buying a house can be a big thing, right? It's expensive. It's a responsibility, let alone buying one house for people. How about having 10, 20, 30 of them, right? So it could seem out of reach for some people. So if you don't have the mindset that, um, 
you can do it and you don't have the 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 family members and friends that are like you can do it it can be discouraging so cleaning up not saying you don't have to hang out with your loved ones right you just maybe have to have some new people to hang around with as well that are actually doing it so i think getting the support system and the positive mindset that you can actually do this and, and the confidence in yourself that that's the number one thing because i know when I see people start and stop, that's the number one thing is what it is. It's, it's the mindset and the fam, the family and friends, because I know flipping houses and renting houses works. I do it. I've been doing it for 12 years. So you got to hang out with people that know it works and actually do it and ask them if it's worth it. Right. So that, that would be the, the number, the first tip I would start with. Thank you. And um, in regards to like building a business, or entrepreneurship within the entrepreneurial world. How was you able to find your network and also who were your like your inspiration? Got it. So how so the question is how do I how do I find my network and um what was the second part of that? It kind of broke up a little bit. So how did you find your network and also who were your inspiration? Got it. So so how did I find my network? So one, like I said, the, the first networking event I ever went to was here at our at Ezria, right? But they're not the, you know, we're not the only networking group. Like we're an organization, but there's also network, like meetup groups and stuff. I don't know if you guys have meetup out there, but like meetup.com, there's this, there's just other real estate investing groups that get together. So I built my network by going out to the network, right? So that 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 was key. You just got to go to these trainings, go to the uh, get-togethers, the happy hours, whatever it is. You just got to get out there and shake hands and meet people. Um, so then ultimately, you f start meeting people that you align with and get along with, right? And then they invite you to be a part of projects or you start doing real estate transactions together. So I went out to where, find out where the real estate people are and go there. Simple as, or whatever business you're in. It, Go to where the people are at so that's how i built my network um and i built it by, by connecting with people so it's really you can get uh like how do i say this how do you i and the word value is always put out there very easy like, oh. provide value provide value what's value right so it's like everyone has a problem whether you're uh you know you know you're just starting or you're very successful uh, everyone has problems in some way. So I always took the advantage of how can I serve this person? How can I help them? So, hey, maybe what's a skill set that you have, right? That maybe this successful investor, maybe they have a, a IT problem. They don't know how to, they don't have a social media campaign. Maybe you're savvy at that, right? So maybe for experience, you just give them that service or you provide your time to them. And then therefore they can exchange and maybe help you with real estate investing. So um, that's how I would build, went to the network where they are. And I did, I took that approach of serving to build the relationships because relationships is, is key in any business. That's where the real opportunities are come from to do, to do transactions in for my world. Right. So um, the inspiration, the people that are in, inspiring, you ever read Think and Grow Rich? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, so written by Napoleon Hill. So one thing they, they talk about is having a mastermind, right? Or a, a core group of people that are above you, that have been where you're, where you're trying to go and learn from them, right? So um, and he also talks about having an invisible yeah. mastermind. Sounds, sounds a little crazy in your own head, right? So it's like, who... A lot of people are dead. Like uh, when I read that book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, it talked about like uh, multimillionaires that built America, right? They're not even around anymore, but there's autobiographies. Like he studied them. So like once you study someone and read their books and their interviews or whatever it is, you kind of start to understand how they think. So I started creating like people that aren't, aren't even around me. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So it was a lot of, uh, I just looked up on successful entrepreneurs and, when I started, I like, there's a gentleman named John Asaraf. He was in the movie, The Secret. I don't know if uh, you saw okay. 
John Astraff, who uh, actually worked under him and hired him as a coach. There's Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk was just getting started when um, I was getting started, like his whole social media. So I have a lot of I have a lot of different inspirational people for different areas of my life. Thank you for sharing, and I think it's so good to understand these questions as well, especially when um, I first started out. It's quite a lonely road at first, but once you find the people that are like-minded, then you're able to kind of, of course. Um, find your loop colors really and be able to kind of have that support network because the support network is an important element. Very so much. Thank you for sharing. And I, I also wanted to ask um, in regards to the challenges or benefits to real estate, what would be your advice to others or kind of a kind of a view of? what real estate is currently facing at the moment, or is the current kind of geographic. Got it. So real estate, and here where I'm at, right? So uh, in the States, it's like high interest rates are going on, right? So when there's high interest rates, so if, as an investor, I serve, if I fix and flip a house, that means I'm looking for a house that is in, uh, that needs repair, it's in distress. We go make it pretty. And then the end, Consumer is a family, someone that's looking to get a bank loan from a big bank, and they're going to live there forever, right? So, so that's who we serve as a fix and flipper. So, when interest rates go up and it's, it's more, it's less affordable to buy a house. You have less people wanting to buy, so that means it would be harder to flip a house. It's more a little bit more risky, right? That means it only means you got to buy it cheaper. You get, have more profit margin for cushion. Um, so that there, and, and, on, and on the landlord side, when you rent to people, um, rents have, it's not that, we had such a spike, whether in sales and in rents, uh, here where I'm at locally, where it booms so much where it's dying down now. And people think, oh, maybe we're crashing or not so much crashing, but it's, oh, we're, you know, something's going on. But I really feel is we're just kind of stabilizing, right? So um, you just got to understand what's going on. That's why we provide market information every month at our meetings. Uh, so you know what's going on in Arizona. So, um, and you can make the proper adjustments. So when there's, there's always change in real estate. It's never just the same forever, right? So you're always adapting and there's so many different strategies. So. That's kind of what's going on. So you're just adapting. Um, we also have low inventory, meaning there's not a lot of uh, houses maybe for sale, right? So that's always a challenge as an investor when you're looking for your next project and there's less people selling their houses because there's so many more people moving here, you know? So that slows things down. So you got to get creative and how do you find these houses? So um, that's kind of what we're facing here in Phoenix. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't care. One thing I would like to make a point to everybody, uh, if you're familiar with Warren Buffett, he says, when there's blood in the streets, that's the, uh, when there's blood in the streets, that's the opportunity. That's when you go and buy and get in the business. When there's greed, that's when you sell everything and you back away. So when things slow down, like, cause we have it backwards. Like when I'm growing up, I knew nothing about real estate. It's like when the grocery store or a retail store is selling grapes for one penny or t discounts, like, you know, Black Friday, right? Everything drops at a discount. Like you run, you go to the store and you buy it, right? Um, but when real estate is on sale, everyone gets scared. So this is when you need to really be, when things are slowing and changing, that's when you got to strategize, be smart, get the right information, get the right people around you. And that's the buying opportunities when, when it sounds crazy out there. Thank you for that share. Um, really insightful. And also, um, in regards to that kind of element of real estate, but also investment and entrepreneurship, would you say there is sustainability that is kind of taken in mind or any kind of element of the kind of current 
changing climate from your perspective? So is there, when you say an element, like what, what do you mean? In regards to like the recent climate change crises or that kind of element when it comes to uh, property and the safety of property. Um, I, like, like should you be doing it? Or is that kind of like where you're going with it? I'm sorry if I'm not understanding. Yeah, kind of, kind of in the fact I think if you have like a uh, extreme heat or if you have like floods, what is the kind of cover for a, a renter or, or a person who has that property from a landlord? Cool. So for, for here in Arizona, we're very fortunate, right? We don't have tornadoes. We don't have hurricanes. We don't, it barely rains, <laughs> so we don't really worry about floods too much. Uh, I would probably say the one thing that you always want to have insurance on your properties, you want to be properly covered. So the one thing we do get here um, is fire, right? And then, you know, someone flicks a cigarette out on the freeway, some bushes catch on fire, and, you know, so we get a lot of that. So insurance rates have increased 37% in Arizona this year. So once again, back to the market, being around the right people to get the right information. So just being in tune to what's going on and having, like what we have here is business associates. So we have insurance uh, agents, we have property managers, we have attorneys, we have title companies, we have all these uh, professionals that serve investors where, where they share what's going on in their in the market every month for their world. So when I hear insurance is backing out of uh, or providing less insurance or raising their rates, now that means I got to say, hey, when I go buy a property, I got to take that into consideration. Maybe for, hypothetically, if I was going to buy it at a hundred thousand, I might want to buy it at ninety five just to cover. You get what I'm saying? Like you want to um, buy the property correctly uh, based on everything that's going on. If you always you make the money on the buy. Right. So if you buy the property, there's times I've bought property so well where there's squatters, there's uh, extra uh, maybe vandalism or something on my properties where I didn't finish the project where I thought it would be. But if I didn't buy the property low enough, they gave me the cushion to survive any storms. So the, the idea there is to do your analysis correctly, understand all the uh, potential risks that are going on in your marketplace because real estate is is like macro and micro right so there's a like nationwide people say oh there may be problems but here it might not affect phoenix or miami right because there's such strong markets where it might a little town that has like we have five million people in phoenix but there's towns that have two hundred thousand that town might get more affected than phoenix across the country right so you got to look at you got to look at both levels right so but at the end of the day if i buy the property right and i my mortgage payment's low enough where i can rent it out and there's profit or if it's a fix and flip i buy it low enough where all of a sudden i need a new roof and it's a ten thousand dollar fix i could fix it and still have some money to weather the storm buying right is is, is key Thank you so much. And a question that I ask all my guests is, do you believe in world peace? Do I believe in world peace? Is that, did I hear yeah. that right? Um, well, I was outside of real estate, but, but hey, I have no uh, hate in my blood, man. So it's just like, I wish well for everybody, right? Like part of it is like, you know, um, that's what I say, serving, right? It's just not serving as in business, right? It's not just serving the, you know, your clients and serving people to gain something, right? So I, I come up from a place of truly helping a change or inspire everyone that comes through our organization to help change their life if that's what they want, right? So, um, I, yeah, so I guess that would lead to peace. Of course, I, you know, I don't want anyone <laughs> to be in a bad spot. I've been in bad spots. It's terrible. No one wants to be in that. So I would not uh, do anything to cause something like that or inspire that for someone else. So, yes, I guess I do believe in world peace. <laughs> 
Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today. And yeah, is there any last quote or statement you would like to share with everyone before we wrap up this interview? Yeah, so going back to like just the investment world, what I would just say is whatever entrepreneurship or your listener, wherever they're at, um, whatever you're learning, whatever whether it's art or whether it's business, um, apply what you learn, right? Because like you, you're going to fail. Well, well, you're going to fail a lot. Failing is part of the process. There's no fa there's such thing as failure. There's feedback. So apply any new uh, project you're taking on or idea. It's gonna. It's, it's the long game. It's planting seeds, watering the seeds, get into some sunshine, let it grow, nurture it, make it better. Just stick with it. Um, if you stick with it long enough, I always found that everything always works out. So um, keep at it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's it from me, and that's it from our guest Michael, who is in a real estate, and he came to talk to us today. And uh, Please stay tuned for any of our other updates. And also, thank you to everyone who joined and for your wonderful questions. Goodbye from me, and uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. for having me. appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.